Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. So, uh, this is a list that I have added two changes to, but this is mainly the your typical standard voiceless voice list. I love this archetype. I, as we all very well know, I am I love 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 ritual decks. Uh, I am and I, I love the play style. I love it when they're good, and therefore, let us look at. Uh, this. This is Voiceless Voice, a recent uh, addition to Master Door from the TCG. I played a little bit of Voiceless Voice, and it is a ton of fun. Um, we're going, I'm going to go over the deck, and then we're going to get into some of the games I've done. Like, uh, fucking Dollar General MBT. Let's go. Uh, the cool thing about Voiceless Voice is, is that you have a lot of room for non-engine. You can see we're playing Mac 3 of Imperm, called by Baylor, Ash Blossom, and Max C. So, and and by the way, this is still very consistent. The Voiceless Voice ha is very similar to like Snake Eyes, where it's able to run a lot of non-engine and still be able to function very, very well. As a ritual archetype, wild, right? Let's get into it. The game plan basically centers around low. Swing low, sweet chariot. The prayers of the voice's voice. This level one light fairy type monster uh, is the enabler for everything done in the archetype. Your the thing that you want to your your this is your normal summon, or this is what Diviner the Herald will get you to as on summon because its effect activates on normal or special summon. So regardless. Let's read it. If you ritual summon exactly one light ritual monster that is either warrior or dragon with a card effect that requires the use of monsters, this card can be used as the entire tribute. That is an interesting statement because there are ritual spells to get around the notion of how cost effect invested things are, allow you to use other mon things as tribute, not just monsters. You can only use each of the following effects of low once per turn. If it's if it's summoned, you can place one voiceless voice continuous spell trap. Spoilers: almost all, basically all of the cards are um, continuous spell traps. Uh, and place it face up in on, on from your deck in your face of spell and trap zone. This gets this this uh by the way plays around anti spell fragrance. Second, if a light ritual monster is special summoned to your field while it's in the graveyard, you can special summon it back. So the first the, the continuous card you're going for in the coincidentally the one continuous we are playing the max of is Barrier of the Voiceless Voice. This is important. This base this the line it goes normal summon low, <laughs> activate its effect, get barrier of the voiceless voice. Barrier of the voiceless voice allows you to search. A voiceless voice card or Skull Guardian ritual monster, Skull Guardian being the best ritual and the main one we want to play here. You, uh, but you don't search the Skull Guardian. What you do is you use the barrier to go into the Safra Queen, Dragon Queen of the Voiceless Voice. Her effect allows you to pitch a ritual spell. Prayers of the Voiceless Voice, the ritual spell. You, you, if you are ritual using the ritual spell from your hand, you bricked. Um... Sending that to the grave and then activating her in graveyard effect to use the to 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 ritual summon the skull guardian protector of the voices voice that you added to your hand off her previous effect and then her, her, when you banish her from graveyard it allows you to ritual summon um, using monsters you control you you if you have nothing else in hand as material you use low as material for the summon. She gets sent to the grave. You summon Skull Guardian. Skull Guardian gets to activate its effect. Lo gets to activate her effect. Lo gets to come to special summon herself back on field. All of her effects are not like are like are not. Like, you can you can use each of her effects once per turn, by the mind you. And then Skull Guardian gate doubles his attack while you uh, have Lo on your field or in your graveyard. And if Lo is on the field. Uh, it turns into a uh, 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 spell speed four negate. Um, also, or rather, spell speed three, because it, it, it's when, not if. Three. 
12 being great. Um, also, uh, Barrier of the Voice of Voice has this fun little backup of while you control low, the prayers of the Voice of Voice and a, and a light ritual monster of which Skull Guardian is. Your opponent can only target ritual monsters for attacks. Also, your opponent cannot target light monsters you control with card effects. Disgusting. Now, by and large, the the way that you're kind of wanting to play this deck is, is that you end on a on, on a low Skull Guardian, bear the voice's voice, and some manner of off engine such as Ash Blossom, Maxi, Imperm, called by. Or if you and usually you're able to add, um, if you can special if you are trying to special summon two, usually try and go for Odd Eyes Pendulum Graph. Pendulum Graph is a is a spell negate and also allows you to get an extra body in the Hormone Vortex. You can really put whatever Odd Eyes extra deck dragon you want here. I find that uh that vortex tends to be the best. Um, it also has the bonus effect of when special summoned it can target one attack position monster your opponent's controls and turns it to the hand. That can be very, very useful. Um, or add Saravis, the Ancient and Ascendant. It's basically a glorified hand trap that, that negates activation of targeting your effect. can be very useful especially when your opponent has some uh, some back row hate for your barrier, the voice's voice, and you've already used your Skull Guard. Guardian. Your Skull Guardian's main negate is going to be to protect this shit. Yeah, um, by and large, most of the time. As far as the extra deck is concerned, we have uh, Divine, We have our Diviner of the Herald package. Most of the time, though, you're gonna when you don't have low in hand and you have to normal summon Diviner, and you open that, you use Diviner, send it for Trias Hierarchia, High Trias Hierarchia's effect attributes Diviner, so it summons itself, and then the, the attributed effect of Diviner lets you get out low. That's why that's there. Intis and Herald of the Arclight are there for win more reasons. Uh, we have some... We are playing a lot of level 1s. We're playing a lot of uh, uh, level 1s level in level 7s here. But um, you also, because we Trius Hierarchia, Hierarchia is a, um, is a uh, level 9 and low, is a level 1. Chaos Angel does work here, but it is basically just a banish something on your opponent's field, and it's a big old big, it's a big old biggest. Uh, Typhon just there is for some explanatory reasons. Uh, Al Mirage and Gardna are here just to cover your ass on some, like just in case you desperately need the coverage for the not taking any damage. Relinquish the Anima. Good for clinch. God knows I there are a couple games where I was able to use it to sort of clear my opponent's board. Very handy. Alina the Light Charmer and Dark the Dark Charmer. Useful enough. You, they're the only two that you can really go into, but with Light and Dark being as prevalent as they are, unless you're playing against Snake Eyes, but even if you are playing against Snake Eyes, it is good to be able to yoink something in Lake of Flying. Two Dynamoto, the titch, the the uh the uh, link to the hour when you're playing ritual deck, very useful. SP Little Light. Uh, usually the good thing to do is, is that link off either a Cerevis, a Saphira, or a Odd Ice Pendulum Graft, like, that you're not using. You want to kind of keep this the Skull Guard as best as possible. You go into Dynamoto, you, uh, you, you say your Dynam your Skull Guardian is negated, you use it, chew through your opponent's board with a Dynamoto, then an SP Little Knight, that gets rid of two things off of your opponent's board immediately. Access Code and White Woman. Access Code for, you know, good for picking off the rest of your opponent's board, and White Woman for getting, for just chewing through shit if you have the ability. The abil the, your ability to get shit on board is actually surprisingly easy here, and it is quite nice. I wanted to, before we get into the games, I do want to talk briefly about the two, the two uh, cards I added in this deck just for funsies, just because I thought it was fun. These do, these do make the deck less, deck less consistent. Uh, they, they don't really do as much, but they are in my opinion, fun. For example, the first one we have here is the obvious one I meant earlier, Saphira, Divine Dragon on the Voiceless Voice. This is a retrain of... Uh, what, was her, what, was her, uh, what was her name? Saphira. The... Uh, the uh, pull this up here. There it is. Saphira, Queen of Dragons. This basically does all of her effects in one turn, allegedly, depending on how you do it, instead of activating during the end phase. 
you you can you can discard two, draw one on, on ritual summon. When an attack is declared, you can discard a random card from your opponent's hand. And during the end phase, my opponent's end phase, I can add a light monster from my graveyard to my hand. Very much this this is a for me a more just a funny card specifically for uh, just getting some more gas off of the curve on ritual summon effect as well as the it's very funny to hand rip. She is she objectively does make the, the deck worse by her existence here, as does the other one, Principa, which is very funny. Uh, you can target one monster you control with Guardian its name, Skull Guardian. Uh, that cannot be normal summoned or set. It can be make a second attack during each battle phase this turn. Um, that basically turns a Squall Guardian, which if you've done your setup correctly, is usually a 4100 beater, allowing you to twice, which I think is very funny. Uh, the secondary effect is also pretty cool, where you can banish this card from your graveyard, target one Guardian monster in your graveyard that cannot be normal summoned or set, and activate one of these effects. Add it to your hand, add one other card that is mentioned on that monster, uh, from uh, from your graveyard to your hand. So that means that if there if I got board wiped, I have this in in the graveyard. Guardian is in the graveyard. I can add a, I can either add it or I can add uh, the um, a, 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 another low that's in the graveyard from graveyard to hand. Again, this is a one off. This is a one of. Both of these cards I think are in there because they are very funny and nominally useful in edge cases, but. They do make the deck largely less consistent. You can remove these if you want. I keep them in there because this is a game. It's Yu-Gi-Oh! We're supposed to have fun. So this is our... This is... Uh, this is uh, Here's an example. Uh, I'm going against, obviously, fucking Sword Soul. Yay, we love Sword Soul. <laughs> they start with the Moye. You send the Moye in the Toll Token and spawn to the graveyard to get the Chi, uh, Chi Chow out. They're already at four summons on the nib, and I'm figuring, fuck it, this is great. I'm going to fucking nip their shit before they're able to get out their uh, burrow and bullshit. They get a soul, source hold of tie of the hand. They you, they get the level four out, special summon that. I take, uh, and then this is where the nib comes down. I put my nib in attack, the token in defense. I, there has been a time in the past where I did not do that. I was dumb. They set two paths, which is very funny. Goes to draw phase, I get a, a Sarverus. This is the one, this is a card that basically allows you to get resources back into the deck to use them. Very useful. You can also cheese out ritual very nice. They pop an anti-spell fragrance in response to my low. Low does not give a shit. Low doesn't give a fuck. I activate the voiceless bear, the voiceless voice to get the Sephira main deck card, to get the Sephira uh, ritual card. I activate her effect using the Sephira I got into from deck to hand to get a Skull Guardian Protector of the Voice's Voice out. I now to be its effect. We are covered for spell effects. I get a Pendulum Graph Dragon out. What do you fucking do? Activate the Sarvis Enhance effect to circle two things back in, just getting some onboard damage. Very funny. From here, I decide to just say, eh, let's not extend it too far. I'd rather give it some damage and have some coverage. At this point, Sword Soul Player Rix. And we win. This time I was able to go first, which is perfectly fine. A Danny Oven, a Diviner, a Trisiarca, a, a Nib, Pre Prep, and a Bear of the Voices Voice. We're in a good spot. But because of that maxi that I do not have an answer to, I am not able to pop off as much as I would have liked. So I go, I activate Trisiarca's effect now, just so he doesn't get an extra card. And I send a Hair of the Arc Light, just say, fuck it, might as well get some material on board. Um, since we're already moving the shmoo in the way we are. Diviner, the Herald's effect gets a low on the board. Hair of the Arc Light gets a Sephira, Sephira ritual. A big Sephira, I mean, out. Uh, Blow gets out the trap, which is what you get when you already have Barrier in hand. Barrier gets me the uh, a little Sephira. I activate Sephira's effect of grave. It does not matter, really, because I have the pre in hand, but in Ash Blossom doesn't negate the entire card for us to turn, just the activation, didn't you know? Activate her on great graveyard effects, sending the Trisiarca uh, as the material to get out the Sephira. This is mainly just so I can get some more puzzles, so some interaction for next turn. That's not Nib. I get an effect failure. That's nice. I activate pre prep. I get a protector, prayers of the voice's voice, and a Sarvarus. The Sarvarus is helpful, thankfully. 
Uh, I send the Thesarverus uh, for the Skull Guardian, thinking foolishly I'd be able to add it back with the trap. Unfortunately, the Thesarverus is not covered as a bonus force card, therefore I am not able to add it back. But I do activate the effect of Skull Guardian, um, send the Thesarverus back to the grave, and just get the baby Sephira in a my bonuses. I could go for the uh, Sarverus in hand, but unfortunately I don't want to give them any more cards. And we're playing Trap Trick. It's probably a good idea that I didn't do that, given card advantages of Red and Butter. They use the Trap Trick's Polita to go into a Sarah and set two. For some reason, without finishing their turn. I don't know why, but they do. I, at this point, decide to use the Trap of the, the Voice of Voice Trap, sending an Effect Veiler, activating Effect Veiler in sequence to negate their Sarah. This allows me to pop, pop their two back row in sequence as well as preventing them from being able to get more Trap Tricks cards. If they send another card and decide to go to end phase, the Sephira activates the effect, allowing me to get Effect Veiler back for more interaction next time. So go around. I draw a call by the grave, activate the Sarvis in hand, send some two cards back, and then the Voiceless Void Bear, the Voiceless Voice allows me to get a low to hand. I, act, I summon the low so I can get a the um, uh, the Graveyard Recycling Continuous spell back, which allows me to get the Trap. Yippee! I activate uh, Baby Sephira to get a Sarverus in hand. We're now in a pretty solid spot. The, until I see the Droll and Lockbird, which I shot Gun Call by the Grave immediately, because I don't want to deal with that shit. <gasps> Call by the Grave resolves. Droll and Lockbird is negated. From here, I decide to get started breaking up their board a little bit. I use the Low and the Sephira to go into Dynamoto. Dynamoto, uh, just trying to get rid of that back row. This kind of forces them to shotgun their back row, which turns out to be an infinite permanence in sequence to the Blessing of the Voices voice of me just trying to ritual summon some shit in return. I decide to shotgun the Skull Guardian's effect and negate the infinite impermanence. Infinite impermanence doesn't go off, so guess what? Now Blessing of the Voices voice allows me to sacrifice the load to get the service out on the field. As well as Dynamoto whiffing because the thing that was going to shuffle back is in the graveyard anyways. But that's okay. Because Lo, the Voices of Voice gets to activate, come back, and I get to use it and Dynamoto to go into a SP Little Knight. And because I use a Link Monster to do so, it allows me to banish some shit, and I decide to go for the main deck monster instead of the Sarah, because I can at least beat over the Sarah and get some damage in. I don't know why I wasn't able to attack with everything, but I don't read cards. I play Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm illiterate. They, act they activate the Ingraveyard effect of, the of their Trap Tricks uh, Heredia, or whatever it is, to get the Sarah back. And they top deck a glorious top deck of a Pot of Prosperity. At this point, this is when SP Little Knight decides to go, yippee! And on uh, Radiance of the Voices Voice, um, I uh, just activate it so it's so we're, it's live. I don't activate any effects. They look at the three, they, they top deck the Trap Tricks Arano Campus. Uh, normal summon that, and at this point I decide, up, oh, up, oh, using the uh, the secondary effect of the trap. Sarah comes back as this SP Little Knight. It's my draw phase. Let's see what I can do. I activate the effect of the Blessings of the Voices Voice, and then in sequence they activate the trap, trying to get back the Arachnid Campion. I activate SP Little Knight and banish the Sarah again. You are not plussing off of this shit, not if I can, av can avoid it. They get back the uh, the, the main deck uh, Arachnid Campion, and I'm just, uh, we, the game is pretty much won at this point. I decide to use the secondary effect of Blessings to Ritual Summon the Sephira Dragon again. I have nothing to worry about, so I don't need Skull Guardian's effect to be on field. Low can go to the graveyard for material, even though she does come back regardless. It's quite fun. I pitch, I get, I, I, off of Sephira's effect, I pitch the Divine of the Herald, go to battle phase, and just get into well over lethal. See what I did there? Like I said, this is Dollar General on BT. Anywho. Big thanks to my moderator, Char, for introducing me to the archetype, first of all. And second of all, big thanks to my moderator for helping me optimize my moderator, Char, for uh, optimizing the deck. If you want to if you want to ping, hang out with us, please, you, he's in the Discord. You can pet, ping him at not Char. Do so at your own risk. He hates being pinged but also still do it. It is very funny. But on that note, ladies and gentlemen, this is Voiceless Voice. I'm probably going to be playing this for the future. Um, I would I do like how uh, tight this deck list is, but there's a part of me that does kind of want to experiment with other forms of things as well. Uh, there is a... I understand why that they limited the uh, 
the usability of this archetype specifically to warrior light warrior and dragon ritual monsters because god knows that if if uh fairies were included in that uh the heralds would be committing various war crimes of the most devious natures hey thanks for watching if you want to outside of this video, outside of live streams, or just be a join the community and be a part of hivmedia.gg slash discord. Discord links there. We'd love to have you. And given the financial situation of the economy right now, I know this is a tall ass, but if you have the scratch to, to spare, please consider donating and becoming a supporter at hivmedia.gg slash 10. All of our perks are serviced through our Discord channel, including early access videos, exclusive videos, and more. Your generosity is a blessing, and a dollar a month is a boot to my bank account. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate you, and have a great day.